Hi guys and welcome back to the vlog this week. Before we get going, I just really wanted to thank you all for watching last week and all of the really nice comments you left me. My two favourite ones, one was the, the hair, I mean yes it is very very hard to frame in this shot, and second, how you guys loved portrait mode. Oh wait that's wrong isn't it, you, you want, there we go, landscape. Okay, let's start again. So welcome back to the vlog and this week we're going to Six Day London. Now if you don't know much about Six Day Racing, you are in for a heck of a treat because it is the most accessible and exhilarating experience in cycling today. Think of the best nightclub you've ever been to and couple with that the best bike riders in the world across road and track. Beer on tap and accessibility to the sport you could only dream of in others well that's the modern six day cycling experience and we are going there right now so before we head off and while I'm sat here drinking my morning coffee I thought I'd uh, give you a few facts and figures on six day racing and the sorts of events you might expect to see the Six Day all started in 1878 when an English cycling champion, David Stanton, bet everybody he could ride a thousand miles in six days. So in February of that year, at London's Agricultural Hall in Islington, Stanton set out on this challenge. And not only did he complete it, he completed it in a mere five days. Now, with everybody inspired by this feat, a six day was hurriedly organised, but not just for one person, but mass participation. And thus, that was your modern six day born. Now, over the years, the six days changed quite dramatically from one continuous race, which was focused on the most amount of distance covered across six days, to now a multitude of events, including the elimination race, the points race, the derny, and the Madison chase whose namesake, the Madison, was fundamental in the change and development of six-day racing over the years. So what is the Madison? It originated in 1898 at Madison Square Garden in New York at the six-day event hosted there that year. Now there was a change in law that year which prevented any racer from racing any more than 12 hours a day for safety reasons, but the organiser, who was still set upon wanting to bring a spectacle to the people by them racing 24 hours a day over six days, thought about this. And he thought, well, actually, how about I increase it from just one rider racing on their own to two, and they race in partnership. And that's where the sling was invented. So they would race around, and they'd sling each other into competition, and then their, their partner would then race while the others slept in the cabins. So now we've done the brief, you go grab that beer, get your headphones, and we're going to head off to Six Day London. <laughs> Atmosphere is manic in here. You ready for the roar? Very, very loud. I've got a fair few people 
people taking the piss right now. But you know what? You guys are more important than them. So anyway, back to the racing. It's getting rapid. We've got three people back at the front. We've got the world champion and two Aussies in the elimination race. Four laps to go. We are a Maltini cabin with Adam Blythe and Jonathan Dimmon. I mean, how's the, how's the racing going, guys? It's all right, yeah, it's quite hot. Very hot. I heard you rolled a dirty earlier in the week. Yeah, I've got a dirty win, which is nice. Yeah. How are you going, John? Uh, I've had three second places so far. So we're getting both. Plenty of opportunity left to punch the air, Mike. Is you not off? Very hot, mate. It's about 30 degrees in here and you're in a leather jacket. Wow. Zipped up to the top. What's all that? Style, mate. Is it meant to be like, is it meant like, to be ready? It is. I mean, like, I'm pretty new to this stuff, so like... What, new to heat? Yeah. <laughs> new to, to heat. heat. And leather. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. New to heat. New to leather. Quite a while, mate. Has it? Yeah. It's funny, that, it's isn't it? Nice. Good, yeah. Really? Yeah. News to me, that, mate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So, what's on the agenda next, guys? Uh, last race of the night, Madison Chase. One more. One more. Right, well, uh, we're all going to be rooting for you guys. So, see your famous jersey. Perfect. Punch the air. Please, please do it so I've got something really exciting to talk about at the end. Here we are, we're on the dirty driver table and I have with me Peter Boyerlein, I'm from Nuremberg, Germany and I'm uh, doing this job as a dirty uh, pacer since uh, almost 40 years. Tell us then, what makes a good dirty driver? Uh, a good pacer is always a uh, guy who uh, is getting uh, very deep in uh, the skills of the rider. Uh, it doesn't have any sense if, if the pacer is very fast and very uh, brave, uh, as long as the uh, rider cannot follow. So try always as a pacer to, uh, to get the best out of your rider. So hi guys, it's the morning now. What really blew me away was the atmosphere. I mean, it was electric. I mean, I've experienced world-class sport and in my off-seasons, I've also experienced world-class DJs, but never in the same place at the same time. This was something to really marvel at and it's something which sets six-day racing apart from any other cycling event. Maybe that's partly to do with the fact that it's not part of the UCI calendar, so it's not dictated to with the same rules as the UCI. Which, do you know what, for me, it adds an exciting and a different element to the sport, which maybe other aspects of the sport who are governed by the UCI just cannot offer. Now, Six Day London is only the first event, and it's the first event of six, this is a franchise which has ideas of world domination and they're really on their way to that at the moment with an expansion all the way across the side of the world into Australia. So what's the next round? We've got Berlin, we've got Copenhagen and we've got Melbourne. All at the start of the next year, all three successive weeks. 
and then it comes back home. It comes back to Manchester between the 22nd and the 24th of March. Now, put that date in your diary because we will be going back to that and we'll be filling you in on the series so far and everything you've missed across the other rounds. Now, if you like the vlog, give us a thumbs up and if you haven't already, click subscribe and I'll check back in with you guys next week for a rather personal vlog on my pro bike from the Commonwealth Games and Gold Coast this year. Have a good week guys and I'll catch you then. One, a two, a one, two, three, four. <laughs> On that note, thank you Matt Stevens for the uh, the outro music.